Wait, is the elevator slowing down? You didn't eat that much at lunch, did you? <laughs> Was the food really that good? Hmm. Guess Carmen convinced the worker to slow down the elevator a bit too much. How many floors do you think we've gone up in the past ten minutes? Ten? Twenty? At this rate, it'll be another two hours to get to the top. Let's ask what's going on. Okay. She's texting me that the workers will reset the elevator and get it back to normal speed. And that the system reboot will give us a few extra minutes in private. Do you want to go back to what we were doing, or... Oh, Grandma's bag. What was in it? Let me think. Where was I? Ah, yes. Berlin. My grandmother came home to live with us in America after the Berlin Wall fell. Meeting her, I was so focused on her youth and beauty that it didn't dawn on me that she only carried one bag of materials with her from home. It was also pretty strange having a woman who looked as young as my mother, yet was twice her age. Maybe she took very good care of herself, or that she was genetically blessed. It took me a few months to open up to her, but we eventually found some common ground through reading. One day, she asked me if I was bored reading the usual books around the house and wanted to read something more stimulating. I, as a precocious seven-year-old, said yes, of course, and Grandma Catherine revealed to me the bag she had brought over. In it was her most valued treasure, a giant book full of recipes for potions and other fun trinkets. Imagine pills to lengthen your hair, drinks to increase the size of a woman's bust, amulets to repel succubi, and, of course, ways to extend your youth, just like she had done. She told me about the special lineage that we came from. Turns out I'm descended from a long line of witches, dating back to the Crusades. This book contained every ounce of knowledge gathered for centuries. Usually we would live in the forest, brewing new concoctions, only very occasionally leaving to attract a mate from the surrounding villages. They would marry and sometimes take them on as students. My mother, however, saw the world was changing and decided to settle down in modern society. While Grandma was sad to see her daughter leave, they made a promise that future grandchildren would be allowed to learn. And so that's how I grew up, studying chemistry to pay the bills, and studying brewing on the side. There's actually quite a lot of overlap between the two. This complacency potion we've been testing on you is the first ever collaboration between modern science and the ancient art of potion brewing. Once we finish testing, mass production will soon enable every woman to be able to create men just as obedient as you. Ah, we're moving again. And almost on floor 150. Now, before we meet my friend, just be aware that she can be quite... strange. Carmen can be a little eccentric, but she's also fully aware of how charming and beautiful she is. She said her secretary is off to lunch, so just open the door. Brace yourself. Chrissy? Chrissy, is that you? Oh, look at you. You haven't aged a day since Europe. Not since the night I sucked all the life from those five men. Figuratively speaking, of course. How have you been? Busy, Carmen. Busy trying to make my mark on the history books with the new drug. Ah. Uh -huh. And this handsome devil here. Is he your new toy? 
Hard to believe this specimen would obey someone like you. His eyes tell me they hold a fire in them. <laughs> oh no. My tests have shown he was quite the submissive even before I found him. Any fire he may have had has been overridden with undying love and obedience. Well, that's the hope anyway. Interesting, interesting. What do you use in that complacency thing? Wings of cherub, pixie dust, genie tears, bench of alkali salt? Why do you ask? So you can steal the formula for yourself? Yes. <laughs> It would make it so much easier to find men. I could just turn them into Mr. Right without needing to wine and dine them every single time. It's so hard finding people willing to cuff themselves to the radiator that aren't total creeps. Well, I can't reveal the secret just yet, but I can put you on the list as one of the first recipients when it finally comes to market. Oh, all right, but you better give me a discount. <laughs> of course, my friend. Uh, Carmen, where's the restroom? We were in the elevator for a while, and I need to freshen up. Down the long hall? Furthest door on the left. I'll be back in a bit. Keep Carmen company, guinea pig. Is she gone? Good. Now it's just the two of us. Please, come sit right next to me. You know, I'm curious where Chrissy managed to get such a fine-looking test subject such as yourself. Did she design you in a test tube to have the ideal features? Or was she just so lucky? <laughs> I'm being serious. Normally advertisements like what she put out for test subjects would only attract annoying creeps. You're much more attractive than a 45-year-old still living in mommy's basement. What's a handsome face like yours signing up for drug trials? <laughs> you are bored. <laughs> oh, you're right. No wonder she's taken so quickly to you. Me? Oh, there's not much story to me. I just come from Transylvania, you know? The land where Dracula came from. Yeah, I'm his niece. <laughs> <sighs> the truth of the matter is, my family originates from all over Italia. We trace our roots to the noble houses of the Renaissance with some darker offshoots. Nobility... Merchantry, artisans, poets, politicians, singers. My ancestors have always been the ones on top. I was born in a small town in Italy. Imagine a place where the hum of the Mediterranean crashing into the cliffs was sewed into the very fabric of our being. Seagulls chirping, exclaiming to the local children that their fathers had come back from fishing. While the community cats would lounge about hoping some scraps would fall into their mouths. <laughs> My father was the local hero, often letting the village use his own personal fleet of fishing boats to feed their families. He and Mama hated being out in the sun, so they decided the next best thing was to let others benefit from their wealth. Everyone loved him. Funny enough, I burn pretty easily too, but I suppose the sun is rather damaging to skin as delicate as my own. Did you know all the women in my family have light, pale skin? I suppose it's part of the secret to their historically revered beauty. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, is that my hand on your thigh? Sorry, force of habit. I only do this to the most attractive of mates. I should move it up and down. <laughs> My, 
you're blushing like a schoolgirl on a first day of class. And just being friendly is all. Mm, don't worry about her. She takes at least 20 minutes to freshen up. Besides, weren't you commanded by her to keep me company? That's right. You have to entertain me. Come on. I know you want to. So I think I'm going to move my hand somewhere else. Into your shirt. Digging down through each layer. The outer jacket. The vest. The undershirt. And then sliding this smooth hand into the chest area. Do you feel my nails? Feel the contrast between my smooth, callous, free palms and the sharp, tingling sensations of my freshly manicured nails. Imagine it a spoon sailing across the top of fresh cream. My fingers causing ripples throughout your body. As the ripple travels spread out, the wave eventually reaches the side of the wall. Let it reverberate throughout your body. Back and forth before eventually settling down its resting rate, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Learn to let your inhibitions go, for you to truly enjoy the company of others, you must submit. <laughs> Would you look at that? Still resisting? But you might just be starting to fall to my will. <sighs> Maybe he's not so loyal as she bragged about. But remember, I'm a lawyer. I get what I want. <laughs>